Hey team, we are here yet again today to talk further about Watson X dot data, which very well will fit your stated use case, which is a fit for purpose data store for scaling your workloads and for accessing all of your data anywhere. And as we've already discussed, it's built on an open lake house architecture and supported by querying governance and open data formats to access and share your data. So as I've explained to you in the past, Watson X dot data is of course useful for a number of use cases, modernization of a particular client's data lake, augmenting your enterprise data warehouse to of course reduce data warehousing costs through workload offload and optimization. And it's of course, particularly good for real-time analytics and business intelligence. So for today's purposes, I'm going to show you how you can utilize watsonx.data to connect to your enterprise data wherever it lies very quickly and very quickly get trusted insights out of that data. Okay, let's start by taking a bit of a tour through the user interface of watsonx.data. And you'll notice here in the infrastructure manager that we have multiple components available to us. At the very top, of course, we have engines, Query engines are used to run workloads against data in watsonx.data. And watsonx.data notably supports multiple engines. In our case today, we're only going to use the Presto query engine, but you can of course provision Spark. And in the future, we actually will allow you to provision additional engines. Below that, we have catalogs. These are metadata catalogs, which of course are used for managing table schemas and the metadata for the data residing within watsonx.data. And then below that, we have two options. We have buckets. This would be data stored in object storage, in this case in buckets, which are very similar to file folders conceptually. And we support AWS S3 style buckets and the S3 API. And then we also support databases, you'll see. So external databases such as DB2, PostgreSQL, MySQL, etc., can all be registered and accessed by watsonx.data. And of course, databases are block storage as opposed to object storage like we see in the buckets. You can see here we have a Presto query engine in use, which is used to interact with data within the lake house. You can see we have Hive data. This is a Hive catalog also residing within the embedded Hive Metastore. This catalog is intended for use with non-iceberg tables where data is stored in files such as Parquet, ORC, or CSVs, but they are not using the iceberg table format. Here, this catalog is associated with the Hive bucket object storage bucket. You can see here we have iceberg data. This is an iceberg catalog residing within the embedded Hive Metastore. And it's, this manages tables that have been created with the Iceberg open table format. And here, this catalog is currently associated with our Iceberg bucket object storage bucket. Under buckets, here we have a Hive bucket. This is a bucket in the embedded min.io object storage. And we see the Iceberg bucket. This is a bucket of the embedded min.io object store. Now, generally speaking, any tables that we create, populate within watsonx.data should ideally use the iceberg open table format. However, we might at times need to land existing data into watsonx.data's object storage that is in supported data file formats, but aren't using the iceberg table format. In this case, we land this data in the Hive catalog manage bucket and then create a non-iceberg format table on top of it. Now, if we like, we can also begin to expand the topology here and add additional components. Then we have the data manager view. This is very useful for exploring and curating the data. And it includes a data objects pane on the left side. So you'll notice here the top level navigation point is the query engine. You start by selecting an engine. And in our case, we only have Presto. So it's selected by default. With that selected, we can navigate through the catalogs associated with the Presto engine. And currently our environment includes two catalogs and we can look at the Hive data catalog and the Iceberg data catalog. And of course you'll notice the Iceberg data catalog currently is empty and the Hive data catalog has some schemas with tables in it. This is data that I've already imported. And in this case, the first schema represents some of our cold data that's been archived and is not typically accessed by our production systems, but we would ultimately like access to it 
for analytics. So this data has been offloaded into objects and stored in object storage. Now there's multiple ways that schemas and tables can be created in Presto. One way is through the use of SQL by running create schema and create table SQL statements, which can be doing it through the data manager page, which will allow us to create a schema and upload a data file to define and populate it. So if I click create schema, I can then populate the metadata about this new schema. And now we can see that my schema appears within iceberg data. Now I'm going to create a table from a file. And in this case, I'm going to import a simple CSV file just for demonstration purposes. And you can see that when we preview a sample of the data that's been uploaded, the schema of the table is clearly inferred from the data in the file. I'm going to populate the metadata about this table that we're creating. And you can see we even include the DDL, which will be used to create the table. We can, of course, alter this statement if we wish, but we're not going to do that right now. And once the table's created, we can very quickly navigate right to it. And here's our simple imported table. We can look at the table schema. We can look at sample data. We can look at DDL. And we also have a tab here called time travel. We'll go back to that in a bit. We also, of course, have the ability to drop any tables that we've created. Easy enough. Let's take a look at the query workspace. Like in the data manager page, we are immediately directed to select an engine to use. Again, we're only using Presto here. And this, of course, is the engine that will be utilized to run the SQL statements that we're entering here. And I have a pre-formatted query here against that table we just created. And I can run that with Presto, and you'll see the results down at the bottom of the screen. Now, when you're building complex queries, especially against multiple data sources, it's oftentimes useful to understand the underlying work that's involved in running it. This would be the query's execution plan. We can access the execution plan for Presto by clicking on Explain. And it'll show us how Presto breaks up and distributes the tasks needed to run this particular query. We call this the visual explain. And in this case, because it's a very simple query, you'll note it's a very straightforward execution plan. So in addition to writing queries from scratch or copying and pasting them from elsewhere, the query workspace can also assist in generating SQL queries for tables that are in watsonx.data. So you can see we have query templates here. When we're looking at catalogs and schemas, the only template is generate path. Now, if we look at a table, you can see that we can generate various types of SQL queries as well as generate path. And if I just, as an example, take the generate select, you'll see that we generates a very simple template for generating a select statement. And as before, the query results are at the bottom of the screen. We have a query history page that comes in handy at times to let you audit currently running queries and queries that have run in the past across all of the engines defined in the environment. And importantly, we can see the state of the query, for example, whether it failed, finished, or is currently running, the engine that executed the query, and the user who submitted the query. The menu includes an access control page, which is used to manage the infrastructure access and data access policies. I'm not going to go through it in any great detail, but I will simply mention that security and access control within watsonx.data are based on roles. These are a set of privileges that control the actions that users can perform. And authorization is granted by assigning a specific role to a user or by adding the user to a group that has been assigned one or more roles. And this access control spans grants on the engines, catalogs, buckets, databases. And then for data itself, access is managed through data control policies, which can be created to permit or deny access to schemas, tables, or individual columns. This is notable simply to say that access to features and functions within watsonx.data are fully controllable and are pervasive throughout the experience of interacting with watsonx.data, as is permissions and security applied on the data itself.
Now WatsonX.data includes a full set of functionality for working with the objects and data within WatsonX.data. But as I've already mentioned, you can certainly use third-party applications to query the data. And you can also use things like the Presto command line interface. I'm not going to proceed with a full tutorial on how Presto command line interface works, but I will pop into it very briefly just to create a new schema and a new table within WatsonX.data. So we're going to use the Iceberg Data Catalog. I'm going to create a schema within it called New Schema. And if I look, yep, there it is. Now I'm going to run some SQL statements to create a new table within this new schema. And I'm going to populate it with some simple data. And then you can see I can simply query against that table and get the results back. And as expected, if I look in the Iceberg Data Catalog within the WatsonX.data user interface, we can quite readily see new schema is now displaying here within Iceberg Data. And we can see that the users table we just created exists in there as well. This is one of the nice benefits of having a shared Metastore. Now Presto, of course, also includes its own web interface, which is useful for monitoring and managing Presto queries. We could take a quick look at that. Let's look at the queries which have finished running, and we can look at the details of one query which has completed. And you can see you can get all manner of query details specific to that query. And similar, to what we saw in the visual explain output within watsonx.data, we can see the query's execution plan in Presto and the various steps involved in running the query. Now, since our use case is to leverage watsonx.data as a fit for purpose data store for your analytics and AI workloads, I'll show you a quick intro to object storage on the platform. In this case, we're working with min.io, but bear in mind that any S3 API compatible object stores can be utilized within watsonx.data. So min.io has its own interface and makes it super handy for us to take a look at the buckets that we are accessing from watsonx.data. And you can see we have two here. We have a hive bucket, an iceberg bucket. And we'll see the hive bucket has been pre-populated with some tables and we can see the iceberg bucket contains the sample table that we created. And here again in the infrastructure manager of watsonx.data we of course can see those very same min.io buckets that were previously registered with watsonx.data. So again let's look in min.io real quick and we can see in the iceberg bucket there are a number of folders here Two of them are interesting at this point. They correspond to the two schemas we created earlier. And if we look in new schema, there's a subfolder here called users. And you'll recall when we created the users table in Presto earlier, it created this subfolder with the same name as the table. And you'll note within the users folder, there's two subfolders. The data folder contains the parquet files holding the actual data for the table and the metadata folder contains a series of metadata files used by Iceberg. And we can see a mix of files here, Parquet, Avro, et cetera. So while we're here within the min.io console, why don't we do a bit of data ingestion? And we can do that very simply here from the min.io console to upload a Parquet data file into object storage. So we will create a new folder and then we will upload the file. So I'll take a sample Parquet file here. And because this data file is not wrapped in the Iceberg table format, we need to use a Hive catalog. And we'll use the existing Hive data catalog, which is associated with the Hive bucket. Now we can see our aircraft Parquet file, and it's within our Hive bucket. So now we can create a schema and a table to match this file. And I think we'll do that again with the Presto command line interface. But of course, we could also do this in the query workspace within watsonx.data. So very simply in the Presto command line interface, I'm going to create a schema. I'm going to specify that that goes within the Hive bucket. I'm going to create the table, and then we can validate that it all works. Let's go back to watsonx.data, take a look at the data manager, and we can see within the Hive data catalog, 
our new schema called my schema two is now here. And within my schema two, we can see the aircraft table. Now to support your use case, it's important that we talk a bit about federated queries. So what we're going to do is combine data from object storage, again, this is our cold data storage, with data in DB2, which is our enterprise data warehouse, and PostgreSQL, which is our archived, we'll call it warm data, in a less expensive data warehouse type environment. So if we go into Infrastructure Manager, we can add a database, and we're going to add a database definition for a DB2 database. Test our connection. And just like when we added new buckets, when we add a new database to watsonx.data, a new catalog is created. We only need to specify the name of the catalog. And you can see now the database and the catalog are reflected here as part of the infrastructure components, and they're automatically associated together. But of course, in order to query the data from this database, this DB2 catalog must be associated with our Presto engine here. It's very easy to do. Okay, and now let's add our warm storage, if you will, in PostgreSQL. And that's as easy as adding the DB2 database was. At our criteria. Test it out. And again, we can see it reflected here in our topology. Go ahead and connect it up to Presto Engine. Okay. Now, if we look in the data manager, we can see we have a DB2 catalog and a PG catalog as well. And the schema and table information are shown here for both of these databases. And because both of these data sets represent the same type of data, just different periods of time, if you will, some of it archived off because it's not accessed as frequently. In this case, they both have the same schemas. So now we can run a federated query for data analytics purposes or what have you, that combines data from all three data sources, our cold data in object storage, our warm data in PostgreSQL database, and our production data in DB2 database. So I have a pre-formatted query here that we can simply paste into our SQL worksheet and run it against the Presto. And you can see it produces a simple result Now, if I look at the explain button, we can see that the output for this visual explain is a bit more interesting than the ones we looked at earlier. And most notable here, you can see five scan project leaf nodes in the tree, each corresponding to one of the five tables being read. Once you're realizing the cost savings of moving infrequently accessed data out of your more expensive data warehouse and into lower priced storage, you of course retain the ability to access all of this data for analytical purposes. I hope I've demonstrated this capability and made it abundantly clear that with watsonx.data, we can save you significant cost over your data storage, yet still allow access from external tools for analytics and to run machine learning and artificial intelligence workloads. Indeed, in your particular use case, the data lakehouse architecture combines the best qualities of data lakes and data warehouses, giving you access to diverse sets of data stored in various formats, as well as the high performance of a data warehouse when running your analytical queries. You can access all of your organization's data across hybrid cloud through a single point of entry, connect to your storage environments and analytical environments in minutes, and enhance trust in the results of those analytics with built-in governance, security, and a high degree of automation. Where can we go from here? Perhaps when we next meet, I can demonstrate to you how you can connect your business intelligence or advanced analytics capabilities to watsonx.data as your source for trusted and well-governed data.